Welcome back to Black News Tonight. Our next guest is known for using comedy to touch base on important, timely issues. He's built an impressive career as an accomplished stand-up comedian, and his talent can also be seen in shows like Space Force, The Last OG, and as a correspondent of Comedy Central's Emmy-nominated The Daily Show with Trevor Noah. He's the actor and the comedian Roy Wood Jr. Now, Roy is dropping his latest stand-up, Imperfect Messenger. In this one-hour special, he's using humor to address relevant topics such as police reform, mass shootings, white allyship, and much more. Imperfect Messenger debuts tonight on Paramount Plus. And here to talk about it is the man, the myth, the legend himself, Roy Wood Jr. Yeah, My brother, man. good to see you. How are you, man, man? It's good to see you, dog. It's been a it's been a minute, man, since I didn't see you. That's why I put up the nice decorative lights in the background for you. That's it, man. I'm talking to Mark tonight. Baby, get the good lights. I see, man. See, I, that, that is good. That's that that's that third comedy special money, man. You got the real lights. I, yeah, right. I, I things must be good, man. Talk to me about about a third comedy special. That takes a lot, man. It was a blessing. It's a blessing to be able to still do what I love. The thing that was crazy was that we kind of hit that sweet spot in 21 of filming the special. We shot in the middle of October and got it on the air two weeks later. And that's really a testament to Comedy Central, everybody over at Paramount, having some airtight COVID protocols in place. But I was thankfully able to kind of work the special in pockets around the country. I didn't tour it like, you know, a year and a half, two years like you normally would. Uh, but also I think we're in a time now, you know, bro, the, the, new, the news cycle is 12 hours. So you can take a joke and polish it for two years. That thing won't even be relevant no more. It's a comedian somewhere right now doing a joke about cloth masks that ain't even relevant no more now. We all cloth, <laughs> though. That is true, man. It, does, does the internet and Twitter in particular make it hard? Because sometimes I watch uh, some stand-up specials, and I'm like, these feel like Twitter jokes. I get funniest stuff on my timeline. Is, 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 has social media changed the game for y'all? I think that it's forced comedians to be a little bit better. I feel like if you're a comedian and, you, and you're doing something that somebody could say on Twitter, the joke is not finished. So there's mm. a deeper place you have to go. I'm the professional. I'm the one that's supposed to present the point of view that you wouldn't think about. So I just think that we as comedians have to work a little harder to find those alternate angles on the issue. And we're able to do it with a little more nuance than social media allows. That's the one advantage we still have. No, that, that is the advantage that you all have. You're able to have, use that depth and that nuance, man. Uh, the, pro the other thing, though, I think is, is the fact that y'all are on uh, these streaming platforms. Now, has that changed the game, too? You know, the fact that there's, you know, places like Netflix and stuff, has that made it easier for c comedians to, to get their platforms, Paramount Plus, the one you're on? I mean, does that make it easier? Yeah, it's, it's, it's easier to get stuff out there, but now it's so many other platforms that there's so much more noise in the air. Like, if you, if we, you know, you and I are both from an era where and our special was low key, like playoff basketball. Like you knew Chris Rock was yes. coming out this Friday and we all got to get home to see, cause you wasn't gonna get a rerun of it for another week and a half. So you had to try and get it on bootleg or whatever. So I think that definitely there's more noise. So you have to be saying something that has some more poignancy or you have to have the type of comedy that gives people an opportunity to escape and forget about everything that's going on, you know? So, you know, my comedy, I like to dive into it, man. I like to talk about police reform. I want to talk about prison reform. I want to talk about Brazilian butt lips. All the issues, Mark. <laughs> I love I, I love the balance. He's like, I love talking police reform, environmental justice, ass. You know, it's like there are people putting belly meat in their booty, Mark. It's gotta stop. Right? Does it? Well, it's it, it, do you? I just I'm not gonna put my belly in my booty. I like my belly meat where it is. That's all I'm saying. I don't need to reallocate meat. I don't know, man. That might be a nice two for one for some folk, man. But but I I I, I love that that you are able to take the black experience, everything like you said, the high culture, the low culture, the everyday, the stuff. When you're just making your list of things to put into a special, how do you choose the content? 
uh, what do I care about and what are people talking about? And then figuring out ways to marry the two, find the overlap, and then those are the jokes that I started building the spine around. You know, I had a long discussion with myself about talking about this whole discourse between Black Brits and, and African Americans, about, you know, Black British actors playing famous African Americans in cinema and the legitimacy of that. And so, it's one of those things, and that's the other thing with Comedy Central and Paramount Plus, is that I want to do material that's for us and for our people and talk about the issues that we normally don't get a chance to laugh at, but I also have to be cognizant of the fact that I'm talking about family business in front of white folk. So how do I find the nuance in that without really trying to blast either side? And for me, it just turned into a conversation about why aren't we taught foreign racism? So you can use a common argument that everybody's talking about on Twitter, I don't need to pick a side on that. Here's another side to the issue that we haven't discussed. You know how long it's going to be before we talk about foreign racism? We just now talking about Tulsa, and Tulsa happened around the corner. So they ain't talking about the pain across Thanks. the diaspora yet. So I have more fun going down these roads that we normally don't have an opportunity to talk about and discuss. You can't talk about We talk about American critical race theory. What about British race theory what about everything that went down in the caribbean don't even bring up haiti so those things i find more interesting and so that's why i try and find the jokes and the stuff that lives adjacent to the things that people already care about and already upset about how'd you know you were funny enough to be a comedian you don't you just do it because you just like it and then you start figuring out ways to get a little bit of money and then a couple of really? years later, you're a hey, bro. When I first started doing this, I was sleeping in the Ford Focus. My mama put the payment, the down payment down on in 98. I started in 98. My mama got me wow. a Focus in 2000. And so I knew I was funny in high school because I rode the bench playing baseball and I would heckle the other teams. So if you could break the umpire or break the parents of the other players, <laughs> that was like getting a standing ovation. But as far as like, oh, I can do this for a living. I started in 98. I probably just got some level of comfort, maybe about 2013, 2014, somewhere in there. Really? Jesus, that that says Whoa. something, man. I, I, put, I, I, I got a little shocked at first when you said that, because I'm like, when you say you don't know, I'm like, all right, there's going to be a whole bunch of unfunny people watching this thing. And watch, you know, I, I got this too. I'm going to try it. And, 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 I, and, I, and I sometimes wonder when that moment is where you realize, oh, I'm actually funnier than the average person. Like, I'm funny. You know, my show meetings with my team, I'm funny as hell, but I, I go on stage, and I ain't funny. I can't do that. You know, <laughs> like, so find, finding that point is, is, is hard. When you mentor young comedians, do you ever have to tell them, like, yo, bro, you ain't got it? I tell them to find their North Star. <laughs> I... <laughs> I'll never tell a cat that he ain't got it, but I will say you gotta respect the audience. The streets don't lie. And if you've worked the joke three, four, five, eight different ways, then maybe you're a writer or maybe you're a producer. Mm. And you know, you maybe comedy might not be for you or this might not be your audience. You know, cats would have said the same thing to an alt comedian. Like when you talk about blurred culture, right? Like. If you're black and you're a nerd and you like comic books and you was doing comedy talking about that in 1998, you was gonna get booed off the stage. But now there's ways for you to connect with the people that have the same interests as you. So maybe it's just an issue of marketing. Maybe this crowd just ain't your crowd. But you know, I try to tell young comics, you know, be honest with yourself about the, th the topics that you're talking about, and maybe there's a lack of genuineness. That's not a word. Maybe your genuine, your level of genuinity in your material <laughs> is ain't there. So talk about things you're passionate about, and that'll come through as well. Man, I love the special. I got a little sneak peek, man, and I won't tell. I won't spoil it for the people because I want them to go to Paramount Plus to check it out. But man, you talk about white allyship, man. Why was that important for you to talk about? Cause all these white folks out here, like I'm good now. Okay, but you can still do a little more. Don't don't kick back. And we got to acknowledge though, if you are white, if you are a good white person, this is the best time in history to be a good white person because you got T-shirts you can wear now and actually show people what you believe in. Because you know, back in the day, if you was a good white person in the '90s, you just had to grin at black folks 
and hope we figured it out. <laughs> hope you're a friend or get your hair cut in one of them. I like black men, you know, the, with, this, right. with this joint, with that joint. Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. You got the little That's swoop the right there. Sometimes you die it a little bit. You got a bi you got a biracial son named Jalen. Yeah, I know. I know all about. I know all about yeah. it. But yeah, it's important to talk about the fact that you know that there are people stepping up and that they are part of the solution. But at no point should we ever take our foot off the gas when it's time, you know, to you know, get things done. No, that's absolutely right, man. Before you go, man, you're hosting two podcasts, Roy's Job Fair, uh, The Daily Show's yeah. Behind the Scene. Uh, what's it like doing comedy in that format, which is different than the stand-up genre? It's easier. It's much easier. Um, the Job Fair, we just talk about employment. So we have people call in, sometimes celebrities, but sometimes regular people, and just tell us about a time you got fired somebody stole something tell us about real job opportunities that are out there in the industry so it's it's you know it, it's a little bit of vitamin it's a little bit of sugar uh but beyond behind the scenes uh beyond the scenes that's just a testament to the daily show because low-key all i'm doing is coattailing off of everything that we've already talked about on the show and bringing on real experts to go a little deeper on the topics because we only have so much time on the linear product, and it earned us an NAACP award nomination for best news podcast. Woo! Yo, congratulations, yeah. man. NAACP award is major because it comes from our people. Also, when you go to the award show, the parties be crazy for the NAACP, man. Make sure you check them. In fact, I might, I might try to say I know you and get and get on the, get on the list, man. Come on, you're gonna you gonna already be inside. I'm gonna be texting you. <laughs> I don't know about that, brother, man. The way you shine these days, man. I'm so proud of you, brother. I'm proud of this project you got. I'm, I'm proud of the third comedy special, which is hilarious. And I want to make sure that everybody checks it out. Roy, it's good to see you, my brother. Everybody, make sure to check the special uh, Imperfect Messenger. It premieres tonight on Paramount+. Plus. You do not want to miss it, I promise you.